Today we're going to talk about thoracic outlet syndrome or TOS. This is a very common injury in the sonography world because we use our arms a lot and that overextension and overuse of our shoulders can cause problems that result in thoracic outlet syndrome. Thoracic outlet syndrome involves the obstruction or compression by a combination of the first rib, the neck muscles, and the neck muscles include the anterior and middle scaling muscles. If you injure your collarbone or fracture it, that can be kind of displaced and that can compress your subclavian artery and subclavian vein and also that brachial plexus nerve. What happens is the nerves, veins, and or artery will be compressed or sandwiched in between an elongated scapula bone, which is posterior, and the anterior bone, which is the collarbone or a first rib. Paying attention to the physical signs will help you determine which structure is being compressed. Now, if the upper extremity has a bluish discoloration with swelling, then you need to think of venous compression, meaning the subclavian vein is compressed. If the patient comes in complaining of upper arm weakness or numbness and pain, uh, paresthesia, notice this tingling, this is probably gonna be caused by nerve compression, and this is the most common. About 95% of TOS diagnoses comes from neurological. Then if a patient comes in complaining of a cold upper extremity with pain and pallor, pallor means a abnormally white skin, this is most likely gonna be due to arterial. This is also the result of an extra first rib. Some people are born with an extra rib and this extra rib can compress on the vein artery and nerve. The most common compressed structure is the nerve. With the three, you have neurogenic, venous, and arterial. And this is caused by an extra first rib. The extra rib would be your cervical rib. An old collarbone fracture. When you have compression from the first rib on the venous side, this will cause like a bluish discoloration. If you see a question that says, a patient has a bluish colorization in their arm and they have pain in their shoulder, what is most likely affected in that area? And you'll say, the subclavian vein. This is the thoracic outlet. This area, you're gonna have the nerves, veins, and artery coming out of that area. This is, on the left side, a normal subclavian artery, whereas on this side, it's compressed. Well, what they're doing is they're moving their arm in a way to see if they can kind of bring on that obstruction. This patient here was probably in the neutral position. Then they moved their arm to mimic those symptoms again, you could see the compression right there. If you perform a blood pressure and there is a big difference between the two arms, if there's reduced pulses in either arm, a bruit, yeah, that's the sound that we hear. If you have suspected subclavian still, and if you've had a previous trauma. Moving on. Now, when the patient comes in, because they have the indications of all these here, including these here, when a patient comes in and they say they have pain or their arm feels cold and it's got like a pale look to it, you should already know what structure is affected, subclavian artery. That's what you should already be thinking when you hear those symptoms. Or like when a patient comes in and they're complaining of a weak arm with associated pain, what should you already be thinking? You're already going to think that the nerve is involved, the, the brachial plexus you know right away, right? If a patient comes in because they have, if their arm is weak with associated pain, you're gonna think the nerve, the nerve is involved. If a patient comes in because they have a cold arm with pale skin with associated pain, you're gonna think of the subclavian artery as the culprit. Then, if a patient comes in because they have swelling with associated pain and like a bluish, colored arm, what are you going to think? Your big clue is bluish discoloration. You're going to think the subclavian vein. Associate bluish discoloration with the subclavian vein. You'll have to know the specific symptoms for your boards. You might not get any questions on it, but you would definitely want to know them just in case they do ask you. 
because they'll be asked like that. A patient comes in complaining of pain and swelling in the right arm, which has a bluish discoloration. And you're gonna have options of deep vein thrombosis, thoracic outlet syndrome. Then they might ask you the same question, but then they will say, which structure in the shoulder is affected? And you're gonna look for the subclavian vein compression. To test for TOS, we perform a number of procedures and maneuvers. And the first thing you're gonna do is once you bring the patient into the room, you're going to perform a full upper PVR of both arms. Then get resting waveforms by placing PPG digits on each finger. Then test to see if there's any compression between the clavicle and first rib or the coracoid region. This is called the resting hyperabduction test day. You'll have the patient sit down, sitting straight up comfortably, place PPG devices on each hand, have them abduct their arms so that they are extended on each side, then have the patient internally rotate so that their palms are facing down. Have the patient tilt their head from side to side and record your PPG waveforms. Then have the patient externally rotate so that the palms are facing up and record your waveforms. Again, this is testing to see if there's compression between the clavicle and the first rib or the coracoid region. The next position, you're gonna have the patient raise their arms high above their head and have them internally rotate their arms so that the palms are facing forward. This is called the resting hyperabduction test B. And again, you're gonna look for signs of compression in the coracoid region. This next position is called the military position or the costoclavicular maneuver. And this is used to see if there's any signs of arterial compression between the clavicle and the first rib. You're gonna have the patient simultaneously bend their neck forward while pushing their chest outward. Then have the patient force their shoulders and elbows backwards while having the patient take in a deep breath and look for any signs of changes in these PPG waveforms. This next test is called the AdSense test with the head rotated to the right. And without changing so much position of the shoulders, elbows, and chest, you'll simply have the patient raise their head so that their neck is straight, then rotate their head to the right. Have the patient take in a deep breath and record your waveforms. Next, have the patient simply rotate their head to the left, have them take in a deep breath and watch for any changes in their waveforms. Then have the patient rest their arms down by their side with their head to the left and watch for any changes in these waveforms followed by having the patient turn their head to the right and watch for any changes in the waveforms. Then you're gonna perform a non-protocol maneuver to see if the patient can bring on the symptoms that they're complaining of. And this includes brushing their teeth, combing their hair, moving their arms or shoulders and neck in a way that was not performed before, and watch for any changes in the PPG waveforms.